This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. This Pennsylvania Superior Court senior judge from our area is now an author. We'll learn about his story next. Hi everyone, I'm Ken Kerr and I thank you for watching. Here's your local information. State police in Hazelton are looking for the public's help after a fight in Hazel Township involving around 20 juveniles. The fight happened on Wednesday around 3 p.m. at the intersection of North Branch Court and 19th Street. Police say an unidentified male used a machete to cut another juvenile male who was flown to Lehigh Valley Hospital Cedarcrest for non-life-threatening injuries. If anyone has information or video of the fight on their cell phone, state police ask that you call Trooper Luchko at 570-459-3 a fifth Republican is ready to run to represent the 116th District at the State House for a full term. Dylan Angelo Ogurkis from Hazelton has announced his candidacy and plans to be on the primary ballot in May. Right now, it looks like he'll be up against Nico Makuda and Dane Watro from McAdoo, Gary Perna from Klein Township, and John Chura from West Hazelton. A special election between three other candidates will take place on April 5th to see who will fill the remaining term of four former State Representative Tara Tuhill. That term runs until November 30th. Ogurkis and the other Republicans just mentioned are hoping to win a spot in the general election in the fall and then represent the 116th district for a full term starting in December. You've seen him on SSP TV on The Judge Stevens Show, and while he is a real judge on the Pennsylvania Superior Court, he has now added a new title to his resume. Lisa Sugar had the chance to talk with the Honorable Coriel Stevens about his latest achievement as an author. What made you decide, and how did you find the time to fit in writing a book amongst all the other things you've accomplished? <laughs> well, I mean, I... I started writing different things in college and I've had a couple of things published in a magazine or two, but never a novel. And uh, I, I, it became a hobby. And I, I, it took seven years to write this novel. It's pure fiction, but uh, you know, after dinner at night, when I'm in court and in a hotel room at night, there's always time. Uh, I don't hunt. I don't fish. I don't golf anymore. So uh I, I was able to work it in, but seven years for 260 pages, I would say, <laughs> is something. <laughs> That's quite an accomplishment. Not too many people can say they've done that, in addition to the major accomplishments you've done in your life. Uh, now, the novel you. is called Willowist, The Return of the Third Reich. So tell us, first of all, what was your inspiration for it, and what is the book basically about? Well... You know, the, the Hitler days were an awful time in history. This is not historical. It, it's actually a thriller. It's about a senior citizen group that uh, is undercover, and they are Nazi hunters. And uh, it, it's about things that happen as they're searching for a Nazi. There's also another um, subplot where uh, a drug lord in Colombia is trying to uncover somebody at the senior citizen resort who's in the witness protection program. And then at the end of the novel, everything comes together. Their relationships among the senior citizens, the Nazi hunters, the drug lords. And uh, there, there's some comic relief. There are two sisters called the Swoop Sisters named after the Philadelphia Eagles mascot. They bring in some comic relief. And there's some relationships going on, uh, some tensions among some of the, the men and women that have known each other over the years. So uh, there are Viagra parties. So I said, there's, some, there's some relief in there, comic relief, but it's a very serious subject overall. And, uh, but it's pure fiction, a chance for people to get away from COVID and all the political agendas. There's no agenda to this book. It's, it's just like, oh, it should be a, an easy read. I don't want to say it's a fun read because the subject is serious. So uh, I had a lot of fun writing it, uh, disciplining myself to write. I would think with your background that there is a lot of detail in the book because of you knowing how the system truly works. Well, I, I stayed away from the law and I wrote it in a different style. So anybody that reads this book, 
that's not how I write my legal opinions. The, the style is a novel style. It's not legalese. So um, I didn't do anything with courtrooms. I wanted to do something completely different. And uh, so I, I did. I've written things before and never finished them. Well, you've certainly finished this one now. So do you think there's more on the horizon after this one? <laughs> I, I seriously doubt it. But I got started in, in college when an English uh, literature teacher read one of my uh, required essays to the class. Didn't say my name, but she told the class that this is what I'm looking for. And that, that kind of inspired me to write. Very good. Well, now, where can we get your book? book is available on Amazon. It's available on barnesandnoble.com. I hope to have it in the Barnes and Noble sto uh, store. The Hazleton Public Library uh, will be getting the book, and we're going to have a book signing there in March on a Saturday morning. Congratulations well, on the book, and we hope it's a really true success. Thank you very much, and always good to, to be interviewed with you again. We go way back. Thank you. We certainly do. Thanks so much. Take care. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. The National Weather Service has a winter weather advisory in effect for our area until 4 p.m. on Friday. Here's our full forecast from the National Weather Service on Friday, a 100% chance of precipitation, freezing rain and sleet before 10 a.m., then rain, snow, and freezing rain between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., well behind near 38 degrees. Winds could gust as high as 29 miles per hour. New ice accumulation of around a tenth of an inch possible. New snow and sleet accumulation of less than one inch possible. On Friday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 12 degrees. Degrees. Saturday, partly sunny with a high near 28 degrees. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 18 degrees. Sunday, a 30% chance of rain and snow showers after 1 p.m., mostly sunny with a high near 38 degrees. Sunday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 10 degrees. Monday, mostly sunny with a high near 26 degrees. And Monday night, partly cloudy with a low around 13 degrees. Here's today's SSP TV Standard Speaker Scoreboard. Jaden Harmon tied the game and Logan Gennaro scored the game winner for Valley Middle School in the Anthracite League semifinals. Gennaro scored after a steal by Jaden Gardner and an assist from Dom Nicka. Valley will now face Freeland for the Anthracite League title Thursday night at 7 p.m. at the Hazleton Area High School. Coming up in just a bit, we get to know four 1,000-point scores for the Hazleton Area High School swimming teams with a round of Know Your Teammate. And next, with another winter storm coming our way, a local doctor has tips to avoid injuries during this winter season. All American Girls softball signups will be held at the Laurel Mall at the dates listed on your screen. For more information, you can email allamericangirlssoftball at gmail.com. The Pitts and St. Patrick's Day Parade will be held on Saturday, March 5th at 11.30 a.m. on Main Street in Pittston. For more information, you can visit PittstonStPatrick'sParade.org. SBTV News, let's send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Lenore A. Kosher, age 65, of Hazleton. The service will be on Saturday at 11 a.m. at Faith Assembly of God Church. Friends may call on Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. Letty Christine Seger, age 90, of Drums. Services will be private on the Harmon Funeral Home. And Lawrence P. Schritz of Beaver Meadows. Mass will be on Saturday at 11 a.m. at St. Peter and Paul Byzantine Catholic Church. Friends will be on Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. The Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Tonight's obituaries are being brought to you in part by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. With two locations in Rockland and in Drums. 570-384-3312 or 570-788-0977 and go to harmonfuneral.com.